quite comfortable. Hello and welcome, a very warm welcome to the Green Bean. Um, my name is Katie and this is Jack and we're recording this in my studio in South Wales. I live in the Van York National Park and I've lived here for a year already somehow. I can't quite believe how time has flown but also it's been a challenging year. There's been a lot of changes in my life and I've really struggled with settling in my new home even though I love it and it's very beautiful here it's been a challenge um, so I just wanted to start this episode with a thank you for weathering that with me um, I know that it's been a difficult year in the wider world as well and it has felt hard to make videos and share my personal projects which feel so insignificant in the face of war and genocide going on um, and I'm I'm not saying this because I'm looking for reassurance about the value of my work I understand that we all need um, creative pursuits places to escape to things to seek comfort in in difficult times but I just wanted to express some of the conflict I've been feeling about sharing things that seem trivial in the face of bigger horrors going on in the wider world. But nonetheless, um, I couldn't get through the day without my creative projects. And so here I am sharing those creative projects with you. And this is a all yarn episode. It's been such a long time since we've had one of those. I feel like I've been off my knitting for most of this year but uh, that lull is finally over and this episode has no fewer than three, three finished projects. Two of them knitting, one of them crochet and I have a new cast on to share with you as well. So before we dive into all of that let's head out for a walk in the mountains with Jack. We've had some beautiful wintry weather lately um, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you too. My first finished project to share is no surprise to you if you've been watching my recent videos but um, it's this, the jumper that I am wearing, uh, which I've been working on for the last couple of months. Um, the reason I think that my knitting has come back with such enthusiasm is twofold. One is the turning of the seasons. So, um, it's proper winter here now in Wales, um, which means it's cold, but it also means that we have these really long dark evenings here in the UK. It gets dark as early as 4pm throughout the winter um, and that obviously is a real 
time to kind of hunker down, get cosy, and there's nothing I want to do more in those long dark evenings than pick up my knitting. Um, so that's one reason. And the other reason I think I mentioned in my last video was that our boiler broke and we had a very, very cold couple of weeks waiting for someone to be able to come and install a new one. I'm happy to say that's now done. We're no longer freezing indoors, but um, it really inspired me to crack on with my knitting. It highlighted that I have a bit of a shortage of cosy knitted garments. I've certainly made plenty of garments in my knitting time, but some of them have worn out, some of them I've grown out of either style-wise or size-wise or both, um, and I was certainly lacking anything, anything at all that was oversized, meaning I could put it on on top of another jumper. It was so cold in our house I needed to wear two jumpers at once, and a hat, and gloves, and a shawl, um, and I had this jumper more than three quarters finished, so it made sense to just pick it up and crack on and finish it, and I'm so glad that I did. I have hardly taken it off since finishing it. Um, it's a self-drafted jumper, which means I didn't follow a pattern, I made it up, but I didn't make it up entirely from scratch. I based it on a ready-to-wear sweatshirt that I had in my wardrobe, and I knitted my swatch, worked out my gauge of stitches per inch, rows per inch, and then from there worked out how many stitches I needed to cast on, how many increases, etc., to copy the shape of the ready-to-wear jumper. And I did pretty well. It's a process that I've done several times before, copying a ready-to-wear garment that I had. Um, and there's always a little bit of trial and error, so the sleeves ended up too long. I stitched one sleeve in and it was coming down over my hand, so I had to unseam the sleeve, take off a couple of inches and then sew it back in. But, you know, that's that's a minor adjustment that you might have to do if you'd followed a pattern as well, so it didn't feel like, um, like a disaster. The other thing about this jumper is the neckline, which was not planned. I didn't intend to have a sort of half turtleneck. I knitted it this long because I was intending to fold it over and make like a, a, a double neckband, but actually when I put the jumper on I really liked it like this and I really like the extra warmth of that high neck, so I just decided to keep it. I can't quite believe that this is the first oversized garment that I've knitted. I think in my long knitting career the most positive ease I've ever put in a garment is two or three inches, which when I say it now sounds ridiculous. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but nonetheless that's the case. I'd never made anything with as much room in the body, I'd never made anything with drop shoulder construction, and I'm a complete convert. I don't know why I, it has taken me so long to come to this shape. I just feel so at home in it. You can probably tell by how I'm sitting, how I'm holding myself wearing this jumper. I feel so good in it. Um, I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out, and yeah, I have not taken it off since finishing it. It is the cosiest, most wonderful thing. Um, the yarn I used was Peace Fleece, which is a woolen spun blend of wool and mohair, which anything with mohair in is just delightful because mohair takes colour so well, um, and I love it. This colour is called Morning Dove. To me it looks like pink, but some people see it as brown or grey, um, which I think is a good thing. Colours like that are always kind of... Um, they're really easy to wear, they're sort of neutral, so they go with everything. And there's lots of different tweedy colours in here. It was a really beautiful yarn to work with. I used almost exactly six skeins. It's a worsted weight, um, what's the meterage? Uh, approximately 200 yards in 100 grams. Um, I used six of them, so I have one left over, because I bought seven, and I'm thinking 
I might make a hat. I've had my eye on the Sky Hill hat by Emily Foden from her book Knits About Winter, um, which I would make with this and maybe hold it together with something else to make her an interesting marl of some kind. You can tell I'm really thinking about cold weather clothes because that hat is a really thick and chunky cozy hat designed for Canadian winter so um, hopefully it would stand up to a Welsh mountain winter as well. My second finished project will also come as no surprise if you've watched my recent videos. I'm just weaving in the ends on my Eskrick shawl, aka my wearable weighted blanket. <laughs> it's enormous, absolutely enormous. This project is crochet. It's from the Daughter of a Shepherd book, Beginnings. And I've been working on it since the early summer and it had some mishaps along the way. I basically finished the entire midsection and then decided to rip it out and start again because my gauge was too tight. Um, the recommended hook size was I think three and a half millimeter and I settled on a six millimeter hook. So um, I'm a very loose knitter generally but apparently I'm a very tight crocheter. So since sizing up my hook I was much happier with the gauge and the resulting shawl is more than satisfactory in terms of the size of the thing. It is huge, which is exactly what I was hoping for. It used just over, I think, 630 grams of Daughter of a Shepherd's Heritage DK, which is a blend of Hebridean and Swart Balls, which is two naturally dark brown coloured sheep. And the resulting shawl is absolutely delightful. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I still need to weave in the ends and block it. It's, you can probably see it's a little bit curly around the edges. It needs a good bath and a stretch, which is gonna make it even bigger. I wanted to show it to you so you can see the scale of this thing. And apart from my gauge issues, it was a relatively straightforward project. It, it's quite a simple pattern. It uses mostly treble crochet in English terminology or double crochet if you're American. And that was the most tricky part. I'm not a super experienced crocheter and I've mostly worked with English patterns. So I had to, uh, kind of pay attention to reminding myself that it was using US crochet terminology. But other than that, it was pretty easy to follow um, a very simple and repetitive pattern. So it was a nice relaxing project to work on. And Jack has already made it very clear that he would like to take ownership of this shawl. Um, more than once I've come into a room where I've left the work in progress in a pile and found him curled up on it 
disguised <laughs> and this uh, this dark brown almost black color you can hardly see him when he snuggles up in it so he's made it very clear that he would like this shawl um, so we've come to an agreement um, hopefully we're going to share it I will be wearing it outside the house and when it's in the house Jack will be allowed to lie on it so yeah it's wonderful to finish a project that has been in progress for so long especially one where I had to rip so much of it out and start again it's very satisfying and um, all this needs now is a bath and a stretch and it will be completely finished My third finished project, I can't actually believe I'm saying that, I don't think that's ever been said in my podcast before, um, but this is a project that you haven't seen before because I both cast them on and finished them since my last episode. They are the Autumn Squirrel Fingerless Mitts by Hattie Kerrs, um, and I love them. And obviously, maybe obviously I don't know if that's obvious or not I cast these on during the um, time where we had no boiler and I was freezing in the house I suffer from chillblains in the winter and having a cold house did not help with that so I really urgently needed to keep my hands warm um, so that was what inspired this project and um, obviously now that I've finished them I don't actually need to wear them in the house anymore which is great but I will still get a lot of use out of them for dog walking I need to have my fingers free when dog walking um, unless it's extremely bitterly cold and unbearable um, so that I can get hold of uh, treats and poo bags and things having mittens or full finger covering is not ideal when I'm walking jack so fingerless mitts are the way to go and I'm really pleased with how these ones turned out. I picked yarns from my stash. So the main colour is, I'm not sure if it's reading on camera, but it's actually four different colours of mini skeins. Um, these are from Feral Fibres. It was 100% Suffolk yarn and dyed in various shades of brown. Perhaps if you look closely, you can see the dark brown on the cuff and then there's this kind of mustard yellow uh, grading into an orangey brown and then a darker orangey brown and if I had been sensible I would have achieved that colour change with 
spit splicing because it didn't need to happen at an exact time. It could have been subtle. The whole thing is very subtle. I didn't think of that until afterwards. So I do have a uh, delightful fringe of ends that need weaving in on this project. There's a theme of ends that need weaving in in this episode, isn't there? It's not my favourite job. Um, luckily, they're wool and spun yarns, so I don't need to pay massive attention. Just uh, shove it in any old way, and then over time they will felt in to the back of the glove, which is good. When it comes to fingerless mitts, I really like ones that have a distinct left hand and right hand. Sometimes the um, the position of the thumb is more on the side of the mitten, um, which means the hands are interchangeable, but I find that ones with a distinct left and right hand fit me slightly better. So I was really pleased with this pattern. It was really easy to follow. I hadn't come across the designer Hattie Kerr before, um, but the, this pattern cropped up in my Etsy recommendations and um, I felt very seen and knew that they would be exactly the mittens I wanted to cast on. So I'm very pleased with how these turned out. Um, I just need to finish weaving the ends in and give them a little bath. I, When I knit colour work in small circumferences, I always work inside out. Um, I knitted these so quickly I didn't gather any video this time of me doing that, but working on them inside out means that the floats have a little bit longer to travel. It helps keep the stretch in the fabric. Sometimes colour work fabric can be a bit tight and lack any give, so I find that working inside out is really helpful with that. Um, and I used the magic loop technique. That's always my preference. I can't get on with double pointed needles, um, mostly because when you finish working across one you, you pull, well you're not supposed to pull the needle out that's got stitches on it, you're supposed to have just one needle that comes loose but I'm forever pulling out the wrong one and dropping all my stitches so magic loop is altogether a safer technique for me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to finish weaving in my ends and give these a bath to even up the colour work. Colour work always looks a bit sort of lumpy and bumpy until you give it a bath but hopefully once that's done the um, the pattern is going to pop even more than it already does. So what do you do when you have finished three projects in quick succession? I'm sure you know the answer to that. You cast on something new and I'm going to shock you now because uh, not only do I have most of the front piece of a new jumper, I also have the entirety of a back piece already finished. Um, I have been knitting like the wind on this project. Um, I think it's partially because I've been doing a lot of travel. I went to London recently to visit my parents and um, there were train strikes so I spent a lot longer on the train even than was intended so um, this was my train knitting project and I made leaps and bounds on it during that trip. Uh, the other thing is that it's a very loose 
gauge. Well, not loose, but it's very chunky yarn and chunky needles. Um, the gauge is something like 14 stitches in 10 centimeters. So it's a very quick knit. Um, and the lace pattern is very Moorish. It's that kind of lace where it's so simple that you don't need to refer back to the chart. It's easy to memorize and it's just a repeat of four rows. So it's easy to think, oh, I'll just get to the end of this repeat, um, which sort of spurs you on to work more rows than you might do if you were doing the same thing every single row. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. Let me tell you about the pattern. So it's called Regolith by Kiyomi Bergen, and it's from this book, Cosmology. Um, and I fell in love with the pattern. It's a hoodie, but I love that it has the lace details on it because it lifts it up a little bit from just being a plain hoodie. It is a drop shoulder construction, not dissimilar to the jumper I just finished and it has lots and lots of positive ease. I'm making the second size, the size small, out of nine available sizes I think there are, so um, there's lots of size inclusivity with this pattern as well, which is great. Um, the small is going to have um, 13 inches of positive ease on me, which is more than this pink jumper, this one had 10, so this is me trying out how does it feel to put even more ease into a garment? Now that I've um, ascertained that I like positive ease quite a lot, I'm going to add some more and see how that feels. Um, the yarn, I'm actually using the recommended yarn, if you can believe that. Um, and that's because I really liked the sample. I really liked the look of the quality of the fabric and I, I wasn't sure what I could substitute to give a similar effect. So I decided to go for the recommended yarn, which is a Japanese yarn by Daruma called Geek, which feels appropriate. I consider myself very much a geek, so I was happy with that. Um, and it is an interesting construction. It's a chain construction, which means that the core of the yarn is like a very, very tiny eye cord. Um, and that bit, I believe, is made from wool and polyester. I'm guessing the polyester is in there for strength to enable that very fine chain construction. And then in the sort of pockets of air that are created by that chain, there is um, fluffy alpaca, which is what makes the um, kind of the yarn a bit thicker and gives this kind of soft, fluffy texture. So it's not unlike when you hold a strand of silk mohair with your yarn, it gives that fluff that sort of fills in the gaps between your stitches. Um, but it's it's really unlike anything I've worked with before. And I think the idea with this yarn, so the core is a different colour from the fluff. And I think the idea is that as your garment wears, you will start to have like worn patches on the elbows or around the neck or anywhere that you're particularly hard on your garment, it will start to reveal the inner colour. Um, obviously I chose the one that is green both inner and outer, but there are other yarns in this range that have contrasting colours. I think there's one that's got like a corally pink inner core and a green fluff, which I was tempted by, but really it had to be the all green for me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I've not worked with a, a yarn like that before, but I'm certainly enjoying it as a yarn to knit with. It feels very nice. I love the soft, fluffy texture, and I also love how lightweight the garment is. So I think it's going to be both very warm, but very, very comfortable to wear. And I'm obviously excited about knitting the hood as well. I think that's going to be a fun part of the project. Um, but a little way to go before then.
it's felt kind of strange to do an all yarn episode when I've really not had much inclination to knit at all over the summer this year. Um, it's kind of taken me by surprise to suddenly find myself up for it again and um, I guess what it showed me is that even though I felt like things weren't happening, when the inclination did finally take hold it didn't take me long to finish a bunch of projects so they had obviously been plodding along gently throughout the year um, and it didn't take much to really get them over the finish line. Um, it's very satisfying to suddenly have three new things that I can wear and will go straight into use in my wardrobe. I'm very happy with all of them, which is lovely. Um, but it did take me by surprise, both to find myself knitting again after such a long time and to find myself having such a slump as well. I have always been someone who is so obsessed with yarn crafts that um, I don't take time off from them in the summer, usually. Um, I've had friends who do and have expressed that they just don't feel like knitting in the hot weather in the summer months. Um, I've never had a problem with that before, so it was a shock to me, but I'm trying to embrace it as an expression of the seasonality of things. Like, it makes sense to not knit as much in the summer. Um, also, I guess before now I was really knitting out of necessity. I needed more garments in my wardrobe and that's still the case. The things that I make are the things that I need to wear. Um, but I have a few more pieces in my wardrobe now. I'm able to be a bit slower, a bit more considered about what I decide to make. And maybe it does make sense that I don't need to knit all year. We'll see. It will be curious to see whether this happens again next summer or whether I return to being someone who's happy to knit all year round. Um, but speaking of the seasonality of things, um, I just wanted to touch briefly on illustration. If this is your first time visiting me, uh, you maybe don't know that I am an illustrator by trade and I run an online shop where I sell things that I've designed. and. Um, that is also taking a little bit of a winter break. I've had a really busy autumn. I launched a new tea towel design and a new collection of rubber stamps, which have been really well received. So thank you if you're one of the lovely folks who's been shopping in my shop this year. Um, but now as we move into the winter, I'm allowing myself a bit of time to reflect and consider what are my next projects going to be. Certainly I've got no shortage of unfinished projects that I could pick up or ideas for new things that I could work on, um, but I'm sort of leaning into the winter and taking a bit of time to consider that rather than rushing into the next thing and feeling like I have to be doing things, which is kind of my nature. Um, I, I like to have 15,000 things going on at any one time, but it means that I can sometimes lose sight of the bigger picture. So I'm really trying this season to allow myself a bit of space, for example, to record a podcast episode where I don't share any drawing at all, um, because I'm just taking time to consider. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share a bit of that reflection and I'm not sure where I'm going to go next, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but it all feels part of the changing of the seasons, not only in terms of what's happening in the natural world outside my window, but what's happening in my life and my understanding of myself and my work and um, yeah, feeling like I'm. it's time to have a look at the bigger picture and think about what direction I'm heading in. Um, this all probably sounds very mysterious and waffly, um, but maybe it's helpful if you're someone who's also going through a transition. Um, certainly for me it feels very tied up in the transition of moving house, finding myself in a new place, in a new country, adjusting to that. Um, it's, it's a time of change and I'm trying to embrace that and let it happen rather than fight against it, is what I'm saying. Um, that's all for this episode. I don't want to finish without saying 
thank you to my patrons and everyone who makes these videos possible. Um, Patreon is where I share extra videos and um, chats about what I'm working on. Uh, you also get discounts in my shop, access without adverts, all kinds of bonuses for support over there. Um, and without financial support from Patreon, I wouldn't be able to make these videos at all. Um, so huge thanks if you're one of the folks who supports me over there. Um, if that's not your thing or regular financial contributions aren't something you can do, no problem. There are plenty of other ways to support. Um, I also have a coffee account where you can buy me a cuppa or buy Jack a treat. Um, all of that goes towards making these videos possible. Um, again, if that's not your thing, you can also share the videos, let people know that you've enjoyed them because um, finding new people and getting to share my creative work with other folks not only brings me joy, but helps me keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you for commenting and sharing and telling me about what you're working on. Um, I really hope whatever creative projects you're up to, they are progressing smoothly. Um, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!